Um, my name is Dallas Barbie and long story short, barbering saved my life. I come from a really tough background, a lot of pain, a lot of trauma, a lot of ugly. And at one point in my life, I just realized that barbering was a skill that I had, but I could also lose at any moment. I can trip on the sidewalk, break my wrist and I'm done. And it gave me this new sense of if I don't know how long I can do this, I want to use it to help other people because it is a gift. We give free haircuts to people who can't afford it. It doesn't matter what situation they were in. That was all started by cutting hair at the teen homeless shelter. Uh, I just fell in love with the kids down there. But it came to a point when I just wondered why aren't they in my shop? Why do we go down and cut hair inside the shelter? What is the reason for that? And I just started really praying about it and the Lord kind of gave me this idea coming from a place of secular recovery to give people coins and then they could bring them into the shop. There's still a lot of dignity in that. You're not, hey, I'm here for the free haircut. You just make an appointment like anybody else, except when you're asked, okay, to pay at the end, you hand them this coin. And that coin shows us that somebody else has already paid for the service and they get a service for free. Uh, that led into us being able to meet a ton of people who needed more help. So instead of just sending people back out into the world, hey, nice haircut, good luck. We were actually able to invite them in and started running men's and women's uh, recovery meetings that were all faith-based right inside the barbershop. So our shop is called Surrendered Studios Barbering Ministry. We are a barbering ministry. There's two parts to the business. The business side, which is me running, owning, and operating a barbershop. Um, we bring on barbers, provide jobs for them, provide mentorship with social media, cutting, uh, business, finances, all of those things. And then separately, completely separately, is our ministry which our ministry is fully faith funded. Um, we're not a 501c3. It's just people giving into what we're doing. And on that side of it, we literally get to provide free services for people who can't afford to be here. Um, we're a luxury barbering experience. We're high end. And I love being able to give that away to people with zero expectation. And uh, the best part about it is we get to teach our barbers how to serve other people first before they're serving themselves. And through the ministry side, they still get paid for their work. So people just show up and we cut hair for free, except people still eat. So it's an incredible kind of pay it forward system. Long term, what we hope to do is be able to actually pay to put people into barber school, uh, mentor them throughout the school process and then have a job and a chair waiting for them when they get out of school. I was brought up in that thought process that if you wanted to be in ministry, you were paid to work at a church. I mean, plain and simple. You either sang at the church, you did paperwork at a church, you we're a pastor at a church. That's the only way that ministry was a thing. Um, I was very roped in and very torn down by that thought process. Um, and it did. It. I got really hurt and completely felt rejected by God through that. And I ran out into the world for, yeah, a decade and took a nosedive into the concrete in my life. Uh, when the Lord did pull me back in and really show me who he was and started showing me those places in scripture that had never really made sense to me, they will know you by your fruit, right? You're the hands and the feet. Um, he was saying things to me like wash people's feet. And I was a barber. I was running a barber shop.
serve people well, love people well. And I just went, all right, well, I'm a barber. How can I do this in my barber shop? And that's really where it started years ago, just going, okay, I'm going to use this to serve other people. And the Lord just started showing me, you have an opportunity to invest your time into hundreds of people a week in a real way, in a way where you are putting your hands on them, where you are invested in their life, where they they care about you just as much as you care about them. But what are you going to do with that time that I'm giving you? And it just changed my whole perspective on how I barber. Um, now, that's that's what we do. We want to be an open door place. A haircut gets someone through the door, but that's not the goal of what we're doing here. The goal of what we're doing here is just being a place for broken people to come and feel safe where they can talk about the things that are going on. Um, a lot of people are struggling with homelessness and but guess what? They come into a place that looks like this and they feel comfortable here because all the people that are involved in our ministry have been in those places already and we've come out of them. So I'm not scared of they're ugly because I've lived it. I'm not scared of the way that they hurt because I've been hurt that way and I've probably hurt other people that way. So we just are called to be a place where we love them until they ask us why. Now um, we're providing services, but we're also feeding people. We're also putting clothes on people's back. I'm also taking time out of my day, which to the world, you understand, if I'm not standing behind my chair, I'm not making money. So I'm taking time out of my day to sit in our back room and help men fill out job applications online and then make sure they can get to those um, interviews. Now that I've been here a year, I know where the areas are in town that are hurting the worst and that's where I wanna be. I know where they stay. I know where they're walking around every day. I know the areas where they're accumulating and that's where we wanna be because we wanna be available to them at all times. The average guest that comes in, paying guest, they are shocked by how they're treated in here. Because your average barbershop, especially in a military town, 15 minutes in, out, it's quantity over quality. I teach the opposite. Uh, hair, Getting your hair shampooed isn't extra, it's expected. It's part of your service, right? So someone that can afford to be here is already surprised by how we're treating people. Imagine how someone who hasn't had their hair shampooed in two months feels when they get a shampoo done for them. That is our heart here. Some days it's, you know, the guy that stays at the end of the street that just can't even hold a conversation and it's raining out and I just invite him in to have a cup of coffee. And sometimes it is someone who heard at the homeless camp that there's this crazy lady who will cut your hair for free and they come in, they get a service, but they walk out changed because they felt like someone heard them. This is probably my favorite interaction that I've had thus far. There was a gentleman who came in and that is what happened. He heard that we gave free haircuts and he thought he might have an interview. So he walked in, told me what was going on. And I said, sit down, you know, he would not stop talking. And it just made me laugh. It just made me smile. He kept saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I said, I love hearing you talk. I love hearing you talk, but I felt compelled to put my hand on his shoulder when I was saying, no, I love hearing you talk. We got through probably half of the service. I was gonna take him to the shampoo bowl and he said, you don't have to do that. I'm My hair is really dirty. It's already been enough. And I said, I don't have to do anything. I want to, and this is part of the experience here. Let me wash your hair, please. I began to wash his hair and when he sat up, he was just in tears and I just felt compelled to ask him, why are you crying? 
He said, I've never felt brand new. I've heard people say that, but I've never felt that. I never understood what people meant when they said it. I feel brand new right now. And the reason that I said I was sorry because I'm talking so much is because I'm the only one whose voice I've heard for over a year. And that, that just wrecked me. That this was the first time in a year that this man had had an interaction with another human being for more than 30 seconds where he heard someone responding back to what he was saying. That is why we do this. I haven't seen him again, and I probably never will, but situations like that is why my answer is never no. Sometimes being hungry looks a lot different than eating a sandwich. Sometimes being hungry is emotional. Sometimes being hungry is mental. Sometimes being hungry is physical. Some of these people just need a hug. Some of these people just need their hair shampooed by another person who doesn't think they're disgusting. I've been in positions in my life where I've done things that made me feel absolutely disgusting. Like no one would ever look at me the same, hug me, touch me, and I felt like I wasn't valuable enough for any of that. If I can show one person that they are worthy of that type of love, I will keep doing this until my back won't let me like and then when my back won't let me I'll keep teaching other people how to do it because it is valuable these people are discarded every day but that old adage someone's trash is someone else's treasure well they're treasure to me I'm Dallas Barbie welcome to church <laughs>